Section 5.6 describes the last way to solve a quadratic equation, which is called the quadratic formula. Now, the reason you need to know the quadratic formula, only half, maybe less than half, but about half of the known quadratic problems can be solved by factoring. Only half. That's not a good percentage. Therefore, we need another tool that will work 100% of the time. We need something that we can rely on and trust that will always work. Now, I taught you standard form for a very important reason. AX squared plus BX plus C. The coefficients A, B, and C are most useful in what is called the quadratic formula. The quadratic formula will find the solutions of any quadratic equation. And here it is. The formula, the x values or the answers are equal to negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4 times a times c, the entire thing divided by 2 times a. What I have just described to you is called the quadratic formula. And during class, I will help you memorize that. But a, if you know a, b, and c, these are the numbers you plug into the quadratic formula to arrive at your solutions. So let's practice that. Example number one. What I would like us to do is I would like us to find the solutions to x squared minus 6x equals negative 7. Well, just like always, the first thing, we got to make it equal to 0. So I got to get that negative 7 over to the other side by adding 7. And so our problem becomes x squared minus 6x plus 7 equals 0. Now, if you tried to factor this guy, it won't work because this is x and x. The positive sign means they're both the same. They're both negative. Well, the only numbers that make times together to give you 7 is 7 and 1. Well, that's negative 7x. That's negative 1x. That's negative 8x. It, won't, it doesn't work. I need negative 6x. So therefore, factoring will not work. Therefore, we have a tool called the quadratic formula. Negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4 times a times c, the whole thing divided by 2a. Step number one, write down what a, b, and c are. In this case, a is 1, b is negative 6, and c is positive 7. Those are the numbers that I'm going to use. Now, very simply, you plug those numbers into the quadratic formula, and you insert them using parentheses. This is negative b, so it's negative, and then I put b in there, which is negative 6, plus or minus. The square root, here's b again, parentheses, negative 6 squared, minus 4 times a times c. The entire problem divided by 2 times 1. Now you're going to go, holy cow, I can't do all of it. Yes, you can. Because we're going to do it in sections. And the first thing that we're going to do is we are going to do what I'm circling in black. That answer, negative 6 squared is 36. And then negative 4 times 1 times 7 is negative 28. Oh, that's pretty simple. 36 minus 28 is 8. And this part right here, a negative of a negative, becomes positive. Therefore, my problem all of a sudden became drastically more simple. That's 6 plus or minus the square root. Well, all that in the black circle is the number 8 divided by 2 times 1, which is 2. Now, you may ask, what is this plus or minus? Well, that's where the two answers come from because it's a squared equation. Therefore, 
the first answer will be and I, will be 6 plus the square root of 8 divided by 2 and the second answer will be 6 minus the square root of 8 divided by 2 you break that up and that's where your two answers come from now before I do that before I do that we learned in unit 2 and unit 1 how to simplify square roots that square root of 8 is very easily simplified because that's the same as the square root of 4 times the square root of 2 over 2 well that square root of 4 becomes the number 2 so therefore I get 6 plus or minus and this part in the circle becomes 2 square roots of 2 the whole thing divided by 2 finally I break it apart that number is divisible by 2 and that number is divisible by 2 so I'm gonna go way over to the left here and write it as 6 divided by 2 plus or minus 2 square roots of 2 divided by 2 and these 2's will cancel and 6 divided by 2 is 3 making my final answer 3 plus or minus the square root of 2 which breaks up to 3 plus the square root of 2 is one of my answers and 3 minus the square root of 2 is the other answer and that is how you use the quadratic formula to solve a problem example 2 I'd like you to pause the video and give this one a try x squared plus 10x plus 2 equals 0 try the quadratic formula and let's see how we do all right first step a is 1 B is 10 C is 2 so I write out my quadratic formula and I plug my numbers in and I put them in parentheses so x equals negative B which is 10 plus or minus the square root of 10 squared minus 4 times a times C the whole thing divided by 2 times a well this becomes that's negative 10 plus or minus the square root now underneath the square root in the blue circle 10 squared is a hundred and the negative 4 times 1 times 2 is minus 8 which makes 92 so I get the square root of 92 divided by 2 times 1 which is 2 and do a little v-racing here all right well now we got to see can we break down the square root of 92 is it possible to break that down and the answer is yes the largest perfect square that goes into 92 is 4 so that's negative 10 plus or minus the square root of 4 times the square root of 23 all over 2 which is equal to negative 10 plus or minus this part becomes 2 times the square root of 23 all over 2 and now all we need to do is reduce it well let's make our life easy let's just do this in one step negative 10 divided by 2 is equal to negative 5 plus or minus and 2 divided by 2 cancels out and I'm left with the square root of 23 and now you could also break that apart if you wanted to so it would be negative 5 plus the square root of 23 and negative 5 minus the square root of 23 and those would be the two answers to the problem or if you just want to leave the plus or minus symbol in there you sure can but people that is how you use the quadratic formula to solve problems that are not factorable and that are difficult to graph